Hey there, Attila with SOS. I wanted to do a quick video for you. I think you'd find it pretty beneficial. There's a good chance that your IT department uh, may have gotten in touch with you and is interested in having you switch from using Dropbox to using OneDrive. And maybe you've been a little bit hesitant about that, or perhaps you're an IT manager yourself and you're really trying to get your staff to move over to OneDrive and explaining the benefits of doing that migration rather than continuing to use Dropbox has been a little bit of a challenge for you. So hopefully this video will help clear some of that up and uh, give your users uh, an opportunity to make that change seamlessly rather than uh, ask you lots of the same questions over and over again. So let's get started. Now Dropbox is a great cloud storage uh, platform. What that means is you can put your files in the cloud and you can share them with other people. But you already knew that. You can access your files from anywhere and everything works really great. And it's perfect if you have a few files. You know, 5, 10, 15, 20 gigs of data, no big deal. But in organizations, there's a good chance that you not only have, you know, a few dozen gigs, but you could have 500 gigs or even up to a terabyte of data sitting in your Dropbox account. And this is where the problems start to begin. Now, first of all, the Dropbox uh, has a web interface and it has an app, but it also has a uh, Windows utility uh, or a Mac utility. And the idea is that you, as you install that utility, it's going to download your Dropbox files onto one computer. So let's kind of run through some situations here. Uh, let's say your office has 10 computers and uh, your Dropbox has, uh, let's say, 500 gigs of data. What that means is that each computer is going to have to download 500 gigs of files onto each one of those computers. Hmm, that could be quite a challenge, especially perhaps let's say it's a middle of the week and it's on a work day and everyone's trying to download their files. Now there are some options in Dropbox and the application itself to be able to limit the download speed, but then again that slows down your ability to access those files that you need to work. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, furthermore, let's say each of those uh, computers have uh, only a 500 gig storage device, uh, let's say a 500 gig SSD. Now all of a sudden it's not going to have enough space to actually have all those files that you need to work. That's also a big problem. Now one way around that is that you can do selective sync with Dropbox. What that means is that it's not syncing your entire file repository but just only a few key files. But usually that gets to be a little bit frustrating because imagine if you need to get back into an old archive file and you have to watch the website and log in there and download them on your computer and it becomes more cumbersome than it's really worth. So. Uh, Dropbox definitely has its advantages, but the disadvantages of having to download those files over, uh, or uh, you know, let's say uh, one of those uh, laptop or computers is not in the, uh, it's not connected to the internet for some time. A lot of people make changes to those files, and now it has to download a ton of new files uh, after being, you know, disconnected from the internet for a while. That can be a real problem. It can really clog up your internet bandwidth. And uh, in bigger companies, especially when uh, you have 20, 30, 40 employees, Dropbox just doesn't make a lot of sense due to these limitations. Now, this is where OneDrive steps in. OneDrive is really good at uh, having all the files in one place, but not necessarily needing to download them onto your computer. Instead, they're kept in the cloud and just downloaded as needed. So you need to open up a Word document, it's a small file, no problem, click just downloads it over and then when you're done with it it saves and uploads it right away in fact there are some new features in OneDrive which are pretty cool where if it is a word file or an excel file or a PowerPoint presentation it saves it in real time uh, inside of the word application itself uh, part of that is designed so that you can share that word application with someone else and um, you can even uh, real-time collaborate on that word document so let's say uh, you and I want to work on a word document together I go onto my OneDrive, I send you the share link, I open it up in my Word, you open it up in your Word, and we're both editing the same document and I can see your changes and you can see mine. Pretty cool, right? Uh, now, if you do need to share that document with someone else, with an outside third party, uh, you do do that through the web interface, so you still have to go to uh, the view online uh, version of this uh, document and then you can click on the, the three little dots and share it from there. But um, I know the Dropbox one is a little bit simpler, but the one in OneDrive is, is still fairly uh, usable and, and, and a good alternative. Now, if you do have a bigger company and you are using SharePoint, 
uh, SharePoint makes a lot more sense. It's kind of a, a OneDrive Plus. Think of SharePoint like a third-party entity and OneDrive being the utility that you're going to use to access that, that entity's files. And uh, the reason that most organizations do use SharePoint is because you can assign folder-based permissions. So some people, like let's say in accounting, may not need access to the things that they are in the production environment or in operations. So there's going to be different departments that you'll probably set up in your Office 365 account. And those users will have different permission access to each of these three different folders. And meanwhile, you're not going to have to be doing this massive uh, hardware upgrade on all these drives because you're not going to be downloading the data as it's, uh, you're only going to download the data that's in use. And uh, when you look in the OneDrive instead, you're just going to see little clouds next to the ones that are stored in the, in the cloud and little checks next to the one that are stored on your computer. You can always go through and clean them up at a later time so uh, it doesn't consume a lot of hard disk space and uh, it's a lot more efficient way to work. Uh, some of the integration with OneDrive is uh, pretty handy as well, especially if you're using Teams uh, and uh, any other kind of utilities that tie directly into OneDrive uh, and SharePoint. And it becomes a lot more of a seamless experience uh, for sharing files, particularly within the organization, rather than emailing them around back and forth, doing real-time collaboration on them, and uh, not eating up all your device's storage space just to store files you may not even need to have uh, on that computer at all. So hopefully that helps to kind of clear some of these things up. Hopefully some of these graphics have helped you kind of visualize what some of the advantages of these um, of using OneDrive over, over um, Dropbox are for you. And if you do have any questions or problems, you know how to reach us. We're, we're here, uh, you know, every day uh, trying to do our best to help the community. So uh, my name is Attila with SOS, and we'll talk soon. Aloha.